In this last lecture on corporate strategy, we'll take a look at how some of this material comes together and becomes the input into discussions about taking some portfolio action. Portfolio action might be acquiring a company, it might be selling off a company, it may be putting a bright spotlight on a particular company to, um, to, to uh, identify ways to improve it or decide what to do with it, if you will, uh, perhaps changing management, um, perhaps uh, uh, rescoping or bringing the, the business into a different sort of line or a more focused strategy, something like that. Different types of actions that are aimed at improving the business position that a particular company is in, competitive position, but doing it from the perspective of essentially as a owner, manager, investor representing the shareholders and not necessarily as the operating manager, although the operating operations is also part of the responsibility. But the perspective is one of, is this the best thing that we could be doing with capital, being in this business doing this sort of activity, or are there some things that we might do differently or do better? So what we typically think about in terms of actions that could improve a, a, a portfolio is you can essentially stick with it. It looks good. Everything's fine. We can make some tweaks here and there. There's always things that can be done. But by and large, we're well positioned. You can decide to broaden the diversification base, moving into some additional industries, um, because you can you take, make broader advantage of some capabilities or, or resources that you have. You might decide to retrench and become a smaller, more focused operation once again. Maybe the diversifications have been distracting, they're not working, uh, maybe the industries aren't as attractive as you thought. Maybe the best thing to do to create value is to retrench, if you will, and divest some operations. Or you might want to restructure the entire operation and we'll close with some discussion about restructuring uh, at the end of this lecture. Um, Again, a firm has essentially four possible approaches or strategies that one can take. You can decide that you are you're in some good industries, but your capabilities are core, and they're such that you can take those same capabilities, move into another industry, and move aside some of the competitors that don't have the uh, perhaps the logistics skills, the technology skills, the uh, sales and marketing or brand skills and capabilities that you have, and you could uh, move into other industries, broaden your diversification base, and increase the shareholder value being generated from a, re a return on investment perspective. You can also decide that some industries, some businesses, maybe the ones in poor industries, poor performers, you can sell them, divest them, uh, get out of that industry, or reposition yourself in that industry, but more likely get out of it, retrench, and focus on one or two industries where perhaps you have some legacy or history, or perhaps where you're just doing extremely well. Many large-scale organizations start in one industry. They diversify into others. They're doing really well in those. The industry they're originally in maybe is not doing as well. And they even sell off their old legacy business, and they move forward into a new industry. Uh, Netflix famously tried to do this with their DVD uh, mail order business. They tried to spin that off and move only into streaming. They got some, some pushback from the industry and the like. But that's the sort of thing that we would be talking about here. You can restructure the entire lineup, go in there, understand what you're trying to do, figure out how you can make some specific moves, selling off some businesses, closing some others perhaps uh, to uh, improve the shareholder position. Um, or you can go multinational and say what we're doing here works really well. We're a little worried about the economy. Perhaps if you're in the US, you want to have a European presence as well because Europe might uh, might be doing stronger when, 18, when it, uh, America is doing weaker, China, whatever. Basically, you can look for um, multinational diversification. You make use of the same manufacturing distribution channels. You have these resource fits, but you balance out a little bit what your distribution strategies are going forward. So these are some of the things that you can do when you're thinking about moving a business forward um, and what sort of actions you have at your disposal. When might you want to add a business? Well, if you indeed, and we've, we've alluded to this before, if you have capabilities, you're extremely good at some function, and you're not fully utilizing that capacity in the industry that you're in, you might purchase some additional businesses in other areas so that you can transfer those capabilities, um, technology capabilities, sales capabilities, marketing, uh, operating capabilities, operations, technologies, whatever, 
and um, be able to therefore position yourself into another industry immediately at a very large scale, for example. You might want to shore up your market position by buying another company that you can consolidate. Maybe you're the second or third player. You want to consolidate into the largest player in the industry. That moves you more into that star position, perhaps, and then ultimately to a cash cow position within that industry. Um, and you might want to just extend the scope of operations uh, for the purpose of being able to distribute products and services from other business units through a broader base. Uh, so you could actually become uh, use the fact that you have a broader distribution channel. Perhaps you buy a national retail outlet. So you can sell a lot of products and services through those various channels. So there's different reasons one might broaden your portfolio. You also might retrench for reasons. One, and the main one generally is you have some poor performance. Uh, you feel like that there's a lack of focus in the organization. Some of your business units aren't doing as well as they could. There's just too many things going on. There's confusion, perhaps a uh, lack of uh, distribution of resources. Maybe there's some competition from some cash hogs that are trying to take cash away to support them when your growth businesses are doing extremely well and they need the cash. So you're competing with throwing more cash into a cash hog or trying to fund the growth of a future star future cash cow, and you just do, don't want to have to make those kinds of choices. They slow things down, and they could impact your longer-term position. So you might, in that case, sell off the lower-end companies and then focus on growing the, uh, the ones that, are, that have the future, that are the future for you. Um, generally, it's a matter of a business, your core operation becoming more valuable, the center of gravity moving in a new direction. And you might want to prune off some of those areas might have been part of the legacy, or they might just not be performing as well as you would hope. When you do a spin-off, you're essentially creating an entirely new company. And you can, you can sell to somebody, but you can also simply give the shares to your shareholders. In other words, you're two large companies. You're, one day, your company has one share of your big company, of your large company. The next day, your shareholders you have one share each of your the company that is spinning off the other company plus the spin-off. So they now own a share of the spin-off company. That's what a spin-off is. Uh, they simply move in separate directions. There's no real transaction where somebody buys somebody else. Rather, the, own, the share owners now own both, and they can decide which one to keep and which one to sell. That's the notion of a spin-off. So generally, the principle is, by spinning off low-performing companies and channeling resources into higher-performing companies, the organization can ratchet its performance up by systematically losing the businesses that are dragging them down and supporting the businesses that are pulling them up and doing that in a way that is, uh, that is, um, that is final, in a sense, that selling them off or stripping them off or divesting them or whatever, or even in some cases closing them down you create more potential going forward. So you're using the portfolio to find what works, sell off what doesn't work, invest in what works, keep finding the next thing that works, invest in that. The next thing that's not performing, you prune that off, and essentially you ratchet your way up into fast growth and long-term prospects. We'll close here by talking a little bit about uh, restructuring. This happens a lot, oftentimes, when private equity firms come into organizations. Um, this is how you can make uh, a lot of money in a, in a relatively short time frame by making some divisive re decisive restructuring actions. Uh, firms that are trying to diversify, as you might gather from this discussion, it's easy to screw that up. It's easy to make bad decisions. It's easy to have a cash hog that start to dominate all the decision making. You spend too much time worrying about that. Other businesses suffer, people leave, and you start having problems. That kind of business can be bought out by a private equity firm. It could be restructured by new management. And essentially what happens is there's a major, um, a major effort to take all those assets and reposition them in some way that those resources could start to match better the market opportunities that they present. Um, you, uh, you might sell off a lot of the slow growth businesses. You might want to get out of some businesses where the competition is difficult. If you don't see a lot of, uh, of related synergies between business units, you might pick one that you think has more potential and divest the ones that are 
disjoint or even spin off the ones that are disjoint and then focus on the ones that are going forward. Um, sometimes there's excessive debt burden, so if you, you know, you've borrowed money for a while and you, you're, it makes it more difficult to generate cash flow because of the debt burden, uh, so you sell off a company, use some of that cash to pay down debt, those kinds of things that might happen. Acquiring acquisitions, divestments or divestitures is when you sell businesses and the like. Those might be some of the reasons that you make divestments. Uh, this is a, a, a picture that was uh, in the Wall Street Journal that just talks about, and it's a little bit hard to read because of the way that it was scanned, but um, it shows that you have companies like Viacom, Ultra, and the like that have a certain market value. But if you look at each of their individual business units separately, you see that when you add up the smaller parts, the business itself is as, it, as a co collective divestor or portfolio of businesses, a corporation, it's worth less than it would be if it was spun off. Look at Time Warner, for example, the fourth one over. You add up all its share value, its enterprise value is $30 billion. But if you look, this is in, was in 2009, but Time Warner itself as a subsidiary was worth more than that, $64 billion. And Time Warner Cable was worth more than that at $40 billion. And then you have a couple other smaller ones. In total, when you break it out, split it up into businesses and sell them off or spin them off. So if you had one time Warner share, you might end up with five shares of different companies. Those shares would immediately trade more differently because they're now more focused. Investors know what the risks are. And your $30 could go up to 110 This is the notion of restructuring that you hear about a lot. And it's, a, it's what private equity firms often do. But there are also other kinds of experts that move in and take these portfolio actions. If you'll notice, this is a very different way of thinking than the business strategy. And that's kind of the whole point of having this discussion or these two sets, is part one, part two of the corporate strategy, to realize that it's not only about the business and the market. It's also about positioning one's resources within the, uh, the industries that are available in the ecosystem, in the economy, in ways that maximize the returns on to shareholders and be worrying about and grappling with those kinds of issues, which are equally as challenging as making uh, being successful in the market. Corporate restructure, it's major changes. You can change the whole face of a company. You can change the face of an industry when it's done well and done, done appropriately. It's a different problem than business problem. It's the investor side of business. But of course, business strategy is embedded in each of these business units going forward. So with that, we'll wind up this module on corporate strategy. I hope the lesson that this is a different way, it's a different animal to a large degree than business strategy. But it is, of course, all related to creating shareholder value and doing that by finding markets, finding customers, and maximizing the value that customers get and minimizing the cost that it takes you to, develop, to deliver that value. That's essentially what the whole story is, but it gets really complex really fast when you get big, and that's the idea of corporate strategy. We'll see you in the next module.